This right next to me is the Zion or the Zhuan Cream 3S. It's a gimbal that I've been shooting on for exactly one year now. And here are my honest thoughts. So before I start talking about the specific gimbal itself, I first just want to say that I am a music video director and I've taken this thing onto so many different shoots. I've taken this onto small budget music videos. I've taken this onto higher budget music videos that have appeared on TV. I've done virtual theater shows with this thing. I've done corporate videos, dance videos, you name it. Chances are I've used this gimbal in the past year to shoot that type of video. And Honestly, it has produced some incredible results for me. And I can't knock that, this gimbal does do a great job at flying very heavy cameras. Now I shoot on the Red Gemini 5K and I kit this thing out with a follow focus, a monitor, transmitter, audio. I've got the big V-lock on the back. So it is quite a heavy package. And putting that onto a gimbal of this size, first of all, be before I even say anything about the gimbal, that is impressive. I mean, the way that it does this is it has this section just here, this extendable arm section, which allows larger cameras to sit on the gimbal and therefore it won't knock the back here and you can get a perfect tilt and rotation and whatever you need to do on the gimbal without it catching on the back. Although saying that, that does bring me to my first thing and flying the red on this gimbal, as you could probably imagine, is so heavy. I find I can do maybe three minutes at a time and then my arms feel like they're going to drop off. And I haven't actually found a support system which I confidently believe in yet to support this gimbal which means that it's just my arms and my back taking the brunt force of the weight. And this means if I have to do a longer take, like when I did the virtual theater show I was talking about, by the end of the performance, if I was doing 10, 15, 20 minute takes on this, my arms were ready to drop off by the end of this. So if I was to do something like this, then I would try and get a gimbal, which I could either have body support for, or I would switch to a traditional Steadicam. Saying that though, that is kind of my own fault for using the wrong tools in that area. So, for that type of work, for longer takes, I would completely avoid this gimbal just because I haven't found a great support system for it yet and this thing is extremely heavy. But for music videos and shorter performances, I would typically go for this gimbal because it's really great, compact and it can handle the red and it can get some great footage. And I've just touched on it briefly there, but this gimbal is extremely compact. Now, if I was shooting on something like a Steadicam or a Movi Pro, for example, these packages are huge and I would probably need a big peli case to take these around everywhere. And if I'm just shooting around the streets of London, then that's just so much hassle. And honestly, I could get just as good enough shots on this thing as I could do on those. And the beauty with this gimbal is because it's got such a small footprint, I can just throw this into my backpack. I've got my camera in there, the gimbal's there ready to go. And if I need the shot, I just grab it out, set it up, and 10 minutes later, I'm ready to go. Of course though, because of the weight of all that, I do have probably the world's heaviest backpack, but being able to throw this into a bag is so helpful. It cuts down on the amount of baggage and the amount of cases that I need with me when I'm filming, and I absolutely love that. It also has these locks. I don't know if you can see that from here, but it has these locks. And that is extremely helpful when traveling because it's not flailing around all over the place. It's just locked steady. And this means if I just wanted to hold this, I can just walk around with it like this. Now, when I first got this gimbal and in my first review of this gimbal, I talked about the vibration issue. When I'm in upright mode, this gimbal performs perfectly. But as soon as I got it into low mode, unfortunately, this was just flailing around like crazy. It was adding crazy amounts of vibration into my shot and it was just making my footage unusable. Now, back then I was only powering the gimbal with these three batteries that come with the gimbal but I found this wasn't enough power. And after speaking to enough people, I realized I needed to upgrade to this power pack down here. So having the three batteries in here and all of the batteries in that power pack as well, the combination gave me enough power to really reduce that flicker and that vibration. Unfortunately, it didn't completely get rid of that. And there have been a few software updates along the way that have really helped to iron out some of that vibration, but it's still not 100% perfect. If I hold the gimbal at specific angles, it will start to vibrate and it will start to nod up and down, even though it is perfectly balanced. So that is extremely annoying. I am completely aware of it and I am completely aware of the positions that I can't put the gimbal into. So I've been able to work around that and I can still get great shots without running into that vibration issue, but it is limiting some of the shots that I could get. And then talking about balancing, I've actually found that over time, the screws in the gimbal, so you can see the original Zion ones down here. I've only got one left 
these original screws actually burnt out over time and I actually had to replace these so as you can see Zhang wouldn't be exactly happy with me but I've put a DJI screw in at the top here and then I've got a GoPro screw over here. So when they burnt out this thing was just slipping I'd have the camera mounted and it would just slip and everything was completely unbalanced again. So that was super annoying and I had to swap these out. And these two new screws have kind of resolved the issue, but every now and then it does slip, which is a little bit annoying, but again, I can kind of work around it. Now with this gimbal, I also found that it was extremely difficult to hold when I was just holding it with the smart sling handle. Now, if I had the camera mounted up here, I would pick the camera up and we're talking an extremely heavy amount of weight. I'd have to lean this into my body and then try and fold these legs down whilst the camera's up there before I can hold onto this. So that was extremely annoying and that really did fatigue me on many shoots. So rather than using just that, I upgraded and got this handle, which goes in between this base tripod and the actual gimbal itself, which means I've got this to hold on to and then I can keep these legs open whenever I'm operating the gimbal. Now, talking about these tripod feet, you'll probably notice them dangling about like this. I found over time, these feet, they just stopped being as tight, which means at the start of every single shoot, I have to get a screwdriver and then I have to manually tighten this up so that it doesn't fall over. But I can guarantee after a day of shooting, picking this gimbal up, putting it back down, these feet will start to wiggle about again. And that puts the gimbal at risk of falling over. And in fact, that has actually happened a few times. I've had the red mounted onto the gimbal, the feet have come loose and the gimbal has just fallen over. Fortunately, no major damage was caused to the camera or the gimbal, but it did stress me out quite a lot when it did happen. And it's happened a handful of times now. Now, next up, I'm gonna talk about focus. Gimbals are great, but the problem is if you want to shoot a close-up of somebody and then come out to a wide, unless you've got automatic focus, then unfortunately that's just not possible on a gimbal unless you want blurry shots. And on my camera, the Red Gemini, I don't have automatic focusing. So I needed manual focus. And the manual focus option I thought was going to be great on the Zion Crane 3S. And I bought the official Zion Focus, but unfortunately it just didn't work. I followed all of the instructions, but unfortunately I just couldn't get it to work. This wheel here was just not working. I don't know if it was a software update that needed to be applied at the time, but unfortunately I had to send that one back. And instead I replaced it with the PD Movie Live Air 2. And instead of relying on the wheel on the gimbal, I actually use this thumb controller and mount this onto a magic arm with some clamps. And then I mount this onto the side of the gimbal up here so that I can thumb control the focus whilst holding onto the handle. It's a little bit awkward and I'm aware that I'm doing too many jobs at once when I'm filming, but just having the option to focus my shot on the go without having the assistance of somebody else is super beneficial. And then my last issue that I have with this gimbal is that Every now and then it just knocks when I'm filming and I notice this when I'm tilting as well. So I'll flick between the modes and I'll go into the follow mode. So it's following my action. So if I tilt up, the gimbal tilts up with me. But I find for some annoying reason, whenever I get to a specific point, the gimbal just knocks and adds this bump into my shot. So I'll have a really fluid tilt and then at some point it knocks and then goes back into the fluid movement. I've updated the software, it's still doing it. I've made sure all of the locks are tight. It is still doing it and it is super annoying. Now I haven't found a fix for that unfortunately, so I'm just limiting the amount of tilting shots that I'm doing on the gimbal and doing those on the tripod or on the shoulder instead. And if I need that tilting shot on a gimbal, then I just have to do it maybe five, six, seven, eight times before I actually get the shot to work without that click. So that is a little bit annoying, especially when I'm working with talent and I have to keep repeating that same shot over and over again. Saying that though, with all of those issues that I've faced over the previous year, I've really put this gimbal to its paces. I fly an extremely heavy setup on this gimbal. I'm always filming dynamic shots with music videos and dance videos. I've traveled around with this thing. It's been super easy to throw into my backpack. And like I say, it's given me some really nice fluid shots that I couldn't have captured on other systems using this camera. So that brings me down to the question of, would I actually recommend this gimbal? Would I recommend the Zion or the Zhuan Crane 3S? It depends on what you're doing is the basic answer. If you're looking for an all-round gimbal 
and you don't have a super heavy setup, then yes, I would recommend this. But if you're shooting one take music videos, you're shooting really complicated sequences and you can't afford for any knocks or bumps or vibrations mid sequence, then this probably isn't for you. And I would probably go down the Steadicam route or maybe even look at the Movi Pro or the Ronin 2. However, if you did want the convenience of just having a powerful gimbal in your backpack with you at all times, then this is honestly one of the best gimbals that I could recommend for people with larger packages, so larger cameras on the gimbal. I believe this is currently the only gimbal on the market in this specific form factor that allows you to fly cinema cameras. Of course, you've got the Ronin 2, you've got the Movi Pro, but they're massive packages with this big ring and it's quite invasive. You need all these Peli cases to travel this thing around. So if you just want something which is fairly portable, you can throw it in your backpack, you can still get great shots, but you are aware that there are some annoying complications with this gimbal that you have to work around, then this is for you. And then the last question is, do I plan on using this gimbal moving forward? As I've said, I've used it for a year. I've used it for so many different projects. I've used it for music videos, TV ads, virtual theater. I've used it on everything you could think of, and it has been great, but there have been complications involved. So would I use this moving forward? Yes but I am going to save up for a Steadicam. And then I'll use this on the projects where a Steadicam is either too much work, so maybe I'm walking around London for the day and I need to get a few gimbal shots. That a Steadicam is just way too much. It's just too extra. It requires all these extra bits and bobs that you have to carry around with you. So this would be perfect for that. But if I'm in a studio all day, then I'm just gonna go towards a Steadicam because the results are gonna be reliable and I've got the body support there, so the weight isn't going to fatigue me within a few hours. So yes, this gimbal does have a place in my kit list. I will continue using this gimbal for as long as it survives, but I will be quite careful and quite considered when thinking about the specific project that I want to use this on. So here you go, the Zion or the Zhuan Crane 3S. It's a great gimbal. It does come with some complications, so if you can work through those, you're honestly going to get some great shots. However, if a company launched a gimbal of this form factor with all of those issues addressed, I would throw my money at it in a heartbeat. So there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.